So in this really short video, I want to show you the new View Transitions API that lets you create really nice transitions between components. So on the right hand side over here, you can see that I have this menu component. And when I click between the items, it gives you this really nice and smooth transition between the two elements. And without the View Transitions API, you can see on the left hand side, it looks very stale and jagged. Um, so yeah, the View Transitions API lets you create these really nice effects and we're going to take a look at them right now, so stay tuned. All right, so I figured that the best way in order to show you how these view transitions work is to go through a really easy example of implementing them. On the right hand side, you can see that I have this really basic menu where I can toggle between these two ribbons. And uh, the code for this uh, component you see on the right hand side is what we have on the left hand side. So in essence, we have a use state hook, which sets the active menu to either projects or blogs, depending on which of the two buttons is being pressed. And just as a quick side note, I'm hiding my Tailwind classes. So yeah, don't be confused about that, but we don't really need them at the moment. And uh, the important part comes over here. So this is where we have the active menu um, and we have this ternary operator, which either sets the component projects menu or blog menu, depending on which of the two buttons is pressed. So if we have projects pressed, we show the projects menu, which is this component right here. And if we have the blog um, button pressed, we show the blog menu, which is the one underneath. Um, and then we also have this small underline component, which basically makes the line uh, underneath the words in the menu. So in order to create these view transitions, what we can do is we can first go to the package JSON file where we need to update the next version that we're using because when you bootstrap a new app with create next app, you're probably going to get something like version 15.1. Um, well, if you do it at the publication of this video, you're going to get 15.1 might be newer for you if you're looking at this video in the future but right now we need to update the version and we're going to update it to 15.2.0 the canary version and then the dot six all right so now that we have that updated we can press save and we also need to make sure that we install the version so we can go to the terminal we're going to close the application that's currently running and we are going to npm install and in just a few seconds you'll see that we have the new version uh, installed which is great once we've done that we also need to go to the next config file and we have to enable the experimental feature so I'm going to uncomment the code that I prepared, uh, which is this code over here, where we're setting the view transitions to true in the experimental um, section and make sure we save that. And finally, the, the, the last thing we need is we need to add a duration for the um, transition. So we have these pseudo elements uh, that you uh, have the, the option to change and we're going to change the duration to one second. So make sure to add this. Now back in the page file, we can go ahead and add the code for the transitions. So first off, we're going to import unstable view transition as view transition and we also need the start transition hook. Then below that in the select menu where we set uh, the state of active menu, we can go ahead and create the start transition. Uh, this is uh, necessary, so we definitely need this hook, otherwise it won't work. And then what we can do is we can envelope the active menu within these uh, view transition um, uh, tags. And now what we should see is if we rerun the application, I think I might need to um, npm run dev again. So npm run dev. And now that it's running, I should see the application on the right hand side again. 
and I do. And now you can see that when I click between the two items in the menu, we have this really nice transition. And there's one more thing that I want to show you, which is if we go ahead and make the animation duration a bit longer, let's put it to 10 seconds for a moment. So we're gonna put the animation duration to 10 seconds and we're going to inspect the element because you'll see that when I transition between the elements and go ahead and pay attention to what's happening in the inspector, you'll see that we have the style being applied with this uh, name. And as soon as the transition is over, you will see that the style is going to be gone again. Um, so yeah, it just disappears uh, once the transition is over. So what's happening in the background is that the browser automatically generates these names to track the elements that are being transitioned between. Um, so it's basically like creating a screenshot of the initial um, uh, sort of state and the final state and transitioning between them. Um, yeah, so I hope that this video helped you out and it helped you learn a little bit about how the view transition API works and we're going to see each other in the next video, I'm out.